Finally, if you were watching on Tuesday, you'll remember we reported that the chances of an asteroid the size of a jumbo jet crashing to Earth in 2032 were increasing. They had risen to 3%. Well, tonight we have an update, and thank heavens, it's good news. The chances have halved to 1.5%. At the moment, the UK isn't predicted to be in the danger zone. I'm loving these pictures. Anyway, it's too early to say where it will hit. We will keep you posted. Uh, the chance of a large asteroid hitting Earth at the end of 2032 has fallen to below 1%, this according to NASA. So relax. Mm. It's got a bit better. The likelihood of a collision previously estimated to be 1 in 32. Scientists say the risk is less than originally thought. Now, the space rock is thought to measure between 40 and 90 metres wide and, of course, will be continued to be monitored by scientists. With the way things are going, uh, it looks like that it will indeed drop to zero, but we're not quite there yet. And so it is important to keep making observations of the asteroid uh, in order to continue to, to narrow down those possibilities in 2032 and um, hopefully be able to definitively say that there is no chance of impact in 2032. Phew! Ish. Tim O'Brien, Professor Tim O'Brien, astrophysicist from the University of Manchester. Good morning to you. Is it few-ish? It's getting fewer. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, as of um, just a few days ago, actually, the, the, the impact probability had been rising um, from, say, 1% when we originally found this thing just after Christmas to, to maybe 3%. Um, and then it's declining again now. So, I mean, I just checked just before I came on and it's down at about 0.2% now, which, which, if you prefer, is 99.8% chance of missing us if you want to turn it around. Um, but to be honest, that's what, in, in a sense, that's what we expect with these things. Um, we start with a sort of uh, an uncertainty that's, that's this sort of wide, and you've got the Earth and the Moon sitting in there somewhere, so the chances of it actually hitting the Earth when it could go anywhere all over here are quite small. But as we get more and more accurate measurements, that uncertainty shrinks. And so actually the chances of hitting the Earth weirdly go up. Mm. And then as it shrinks further, we're now in a position where it looks like the most likely uh, crossing point as it passes the Earth is somewhere between the Earth and the Moon rather than right on the Earth. Um, the trajectory it's on, the path mm. it is travelling, is it fixed? I know this sounds like a, mm. a silly question. Mm -hmm. Not really, no. Do you know what I mean, though? Because if, the, if it's fixed, then I understand why the percentages and the probabilities change. Yeah. But is it, if it's not fixed, yeah. it will keep changing. Yeah, so, it, so the reason these, these probabilities change is because it's just how many observations we have. So we, we, we measure the position of this thing moving across the sky as this sort of faint dot of light, and we have a certain measurement uncertainty on that position, and that leads to an uncertainty in where it will be eight years later. And I understand it's clearer about. now because it's closer. We get more accurate observations, but yeah. But can anything take it off? Its, is, has it uh, got a fixed course or can anything take it? Or, you know, well, how often do things take it off its course? Yeah, so there's a few things to say. That. And one is this thing came from the asteroid belt. Um, so, so there's many asteroids in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. So gravitational interactions, when one asteroid comes near to another, that can give an asteroid a kick. It can change its orbit and that can bring it closer in, you know, towards the Earth. Um, there's another sort of effect related to how this sun heats the surface of the asteroid and over many thousands or millions of years that gradually changes the orbits. And of course, you know, we've got, we've got a solar system that's, you know, 450,000, 400,000 million years old. So it's sort of, uh, it's, uh, it, that, that, over a long time that can change things. And I would say the interesting and, you know, sort of hopeful aspect, one way we can change the orbits of these things is to do it directly ourselves. So we can, if we spot one that's coming in towards us and that will hit the Earth, which, you know, it looks like this one won't, but it will hit the Earth, then we actually have tested technology where we send a spacecraft in and we smack it into the asteroid, we just punch it, and that changes its speed by a very small amount, but that's enough to change its orbit that it will miss the Earth. It is just like something from a movie, what you've described there. Exactly. Isn't it? What are we going to do? It's coming towards us. Can I just be clear? If it's varied between sort of naught and 3% yep. so far, yep. in quite a short space of time, yep. I mean, could you and your expert colleagues wake up tomorrow morning and, and just go, do you know what? 
it's suddenly become 12% or, or 20%, given that it's, it's already changed a lot, and you're not doing anything. Uh, no. Could it, could it so suddenly not, so have a dramatically yeah. higher...? Well, it's not the orbit that's changing. So the asteroid's orbit is not changing. It's how precise our measurements of it, how many observations we have had of it. We've had 450 observations of it so far. When you, as you build those up, you know more and more precisely where this thing will be. Who's so that's it? why this changes, rather right. than it, I understand. rather than it moving, and it surprisingly suddenly comes towards us. Yeah. Who's yeah. observing it? Um, so networks. So there's a, there's a number of networks of telescopes around the world. I mean, we could probably do with more, to be to be fair, um, which are constantly monitoring the whole sky as often as they can, and they're basically looking for. You know, when you see these sorts of vistas of stars like there are behind us here, you take a series of, of, of images of a, of, of a large patch of sky and you just compare them. And if you see a dot moving relative to the other dots, then that's potentially Do an you asteroid. all work together all the time with information like this? Yes. Right, yeah. OK. So, so we can all access this information. If you just start using a web search and you, and you look, you will find the list of exactly what observations have happened. They're updated every day. With, with where the telescope was that took the observations. This one was discovered with a telescope in Chile, um, but that's part of a, of, a, of a network that has telescopes in South Africa um, as well. So, for example, you know, you need telescopes around the planet because it has to be night. But we still so, need you know, your expertise. Well, Otherwise, we don't understand it. Information well, is one thing, and yeah, then understanding exactly. it is another. Lovely to see you today. Mm -hmm. Thank Always you. Always lovely having you on the sofa. Thank you. Professor Tim O'Brien, thank you.